Well, let me do a couple of examples that help us see again. And actually, I've already done one of these, but it's a diff it won't necessarily look the same, but it actually is the same as what I did a minute ago. And hopefully you'll tell me what it was. So for example, you might think about the classic treatment of a subsidy. So let's think about the classic way we might think about a subsidy. And so the subsidy, here's demand, here's supply. So we got our supply and demand view of the world. Okay. And here is the market equilibrium absent the subsidy, right? Everybody, this is this is not even price theory. This is undergraduate economics, right? So undergraduate economics. Actually, if you really understood what you did in undergraduate economist, economics, you'd be a great economist, right? You'd be a great, I mean, anybody who really understood everything in an undergraduate textbook would be a great economist. I really think that's true. All right. How, would you, how do we analyze a subsidy? Well, the typical idea is the government pays a subsidy per unit. That's the subsidy. And that leads to a higher equilibrium output, QS. Price to the buyers up here. I'm sorry, price to the sellers up here. Price to the buyers down here. And the government's cost of the subsidy is this big box of which the suppliers collect this fraction, right? That is, some of that government subsidy is going to go to the sellers, some of it's going to go to the buyers, and some of it's going to be dead weight loss. Everybody's seen this picture a hundred times. More commonly done with a tax, but you can do it with a subsidy. Now, one key lesson of this is that the benefits to the sellers are typically going to be less than the cost of the subsidy to the government. 